To see more tours and test drives, be sure to check out tinyhome.tours. Hey everybody, Chris here from Chris and G Travels. Today we have Pete from Marathon Coach. We're going to be showing you the process of how this Prevo goes from just straight from the factory to an absolutely gorgeous coach. So Pete, you want to tell us how the process goes? Sure. This is the shell that we get from Prevo out of Quebec, Canada. You can see it's just primer gray. From here, it's going to get some body work done to it, not only get it body blocked and smoothed out, but it's also going to have the top cut and extend it up to hide the awnings. We're going to put a backup camera mount on the back. We're also going to cut the front and add a few things that make it, you know, just like a marathon, make it just like ours and not just any old bus out there. First step, get it in, get some more primer on it, body block it, and start adding some fiberglass. So we're actually going to be heading back to the paint studio and we're going to go from basically this to the finished product. I'm excited to show you all the process. Let's do it. All right. Well, as I was saying earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a part of the top of the coach and put on our own look, our own piece. This is the mold for the top portion, so they'll, they'll inject this, peel it, and that will become our own part that we've created here to go on the top. Uh, the one in the background here, these are for um, the fenders. We do our own, like these, these are the actual pieces that have been popped out of the mold. So these are for the X3 style, which have the stainless ribbing on the side. This phase in the paint, they have uh, already altered the front cap and the rear cap by putting on our own look, our own fiberglass. We put on the brackets and the awnings up top. And we especially do that this early whenever we're going to actually put the design up and through the actual awnings. The, the whole body's been body blocked. This one's also a little different than the smooth sided ones called an H. This is an X3. This has stainless steel ribbing on the side. So we've already had a polishing crew come through and they've polished it in the areas where it's not going to get painted, which is the masked area you see here. Everything under here is bright and shiny and ready to go. This area kind of remains sanded down so that it will accept paint. So this one's already been primered and it's got its first color. Uh, so the guys will have been working at the design. They'll look on the design and say, okay, uh, black's gonna be our first thing we're gonna drop. So they hand mask off the first part of the design that we wanna keep stainless. And then they shoot the first coat of black. And as you can see, they sand it down next and then they'll move on to the next color. This coach is kind of in the final stage of paint. And this is what the design that I gave them looks like is just the drawing portion of it. And you can see, what they've come up with, it is completely hand laid out, so this is not vinyl, this is not some sort of vector graphics or something like that. The guys actually take a look at the drawing, they hand lay it out, and then they build the colors up. This one is in the portion where it's had about seven layers of clear. They go through and put on three at first, then they do a whole cut on it where they sand the whole thing down, put on another four layers, and at this point what they've done is they have again sanded it, which is called a cut and buff. Then they go to finer sandpaper and finer sandpaper until they're into the buffing process, and they continue to polish this until everything is out of it, every swirl mark. This is something that we've been striving to get better and better at. We've uh, just recently sent some guys down to California. They uh, learn some new tricks of the trade. So we're always trying to learn the newest technique to get this to where it's just like glass. Well, this is Edgar. He's just uh, sanded this down and fixed a blemish. And this is off the coach that they're doing the cut and buff work uh, on and in the final stage. But the guys found a small blemish and you know they have a lot of pride in their work so they couldn't live with that small blemish. So. Uh, they pulled the panel, this is a fender well, and Edward came in, sanded it, touched it up, and it's just gotten a complete new recoat of clear. So this one's still going to go through a cut and buff process again, but the whole concept, get the coach as close to perfect as possible. So this is a test panel. When I come up with a design, usually to drive Andy crazy because it's pretty they're usually pretty difficult. I guess I should also point out that Andy is the head of the paint department. I come up with the designs and both of us, our first job is to make the owner of the company happy. We actually work directly with him whenever it's a paint design that is something that we're just going to put up for sale. 
if it's something that's custom from a particular person, Andy will work, Andy and I will work directly with that client to come up with their own design. In this case, this one was something we were doing for the boss that's going to be put up for sale. And I'll come to Andy and show him the design, but Andy then taps into his uh, hot rod experience from the past and we start talking about, you know, this would be cool done in candy, this would be done what, really cool with a with a texture, with a with a drop shadow. Sometimes Andy custom custom mixes. All these are custom mixes. Yeah, this one was fully yeah. custom. So, in other words, instead of going by the chips out of the book, Andy goes by what he thinks is going to be the best, and I trust his judgment. This is where he is amazing. This is what we end up with. Uh, we always do a test panel first because this is the type of thing you just don't want to be testing right on the coach. So for those who don't know, a candy paint is a dye, it's, it's transparent, so whatever is behind it, when you put it on, it shows through. So that's why there's texture within it. And This one was also fun for Andy and I because we, we wanted hot rod flames on the coach. So there was a couple of ways that Andy was telling me he can do it, and this is one of them. We wanted to test it out and make sure that we were happy with it. We used to do this back in a long time ago in California, do flames and then flames within flames. And uh, we haven't seen any close to flames besides ours. Yeah, we're kind of taking some risks here yeah. and there. And I get fired, bro. <laughs> yeah. So far, people actually really have liked it. We haven't done a lot of hot rod flames. We're kind of gently... Uh, working them in just to make sure that people accept it. Well, what we have here is the finished product for paint. The paint is the first thing that we do uh, after it's uh, come into us, been you know, the shell's been tested, prepped, but nothing's inside at that point. And the reason why we do that first is these things do get baked at about 130, 140 degrees, uh, sometimes several times to cure the paint. That's something you just don't want to run the inside of the coach with leathers and other adhesives and uh, anything else on the inside of the coach. You don't want those items baking. That's one of the reasons why it's done first. The other reason is, is because you don't want anything painted with something expensive on the inside. If any paint gets on really expensive leather or expensive fabrics, then obviously we've got to strip it off and replace it. So in one way, this way, where you paint it first, you run the risk of having to touch up some damage at the end of the process. But the other way of painting it last, there's much more risk. So there's no perfect time, but this ends up being the best for us. Just so that you kind of get an idea also on what it takes to do this. It takes three guys, somewhere between 21 days to 23 days to complete the paint job. We'd like to thank Marathon Coach for having us, and be sure to check out our website, tinyhome.tours, for more videos.